Here is the liquid router editor. I'm going to show the basics in this uh, video. Uh, the file menu system will allow you to install your firmware, open a file that you've saved prior, save a file of course, and then transfer to the device, transfer from the device and connect it um, to the liquid router and then different display sizes. Up on the top of the uh, editor we have our main buttons, we have our open uh, to grab a file off the uh, hard drive. You can select the uh, preset range and the loop range that you want to load in, global settings or not, uh, what you want to load out of the file and then you can go ahead and open it. Save is the same thing, select your range, usually you would save everything into a file pick what you want saved into the file and then save it. Clear. Uh, the editor has three main uh, functions. Uh, allows you to edit presets. It allows you to edit loops. And then it has global settings. And those who have a liquid foot controller, uh, these buttons should look familiar since they're similar to that editor. You can get one item from the liquid router, you can send one item to the liquid router, you can synchronize with the liquid router, and then you can connect. So let's go ahead and connect. Uh, so now we're connected to the liquid router that's plugged in. Let's go ahead and synchronize while we're here. And now I'm grabbing my presets, all the configuration data, and then the loops. The Let's go into preset mode real quick. So here I have my uh, presets and we have a screen where we can sort and uh, organize our presets or jump right to them by double clicking so it's very easy to sort and organize your presets or you could just scroll up and down within a preset we have settings screen which allows you to select the mode that the presets running in you, you can have a preset act like a loop looper or uh, audio switcher. We have routing mode and then we have a hard fade and a um, uh, a fade a, a fade mute and a hard mute. Hard mute if the preset is triggered as hard mute then when this preset is selected via MIDI of some sort usually it will hard mute or shut off all of the uh, audio in the um, uh, liquid router itself. A fade mute will do what you would think instead of doing a hard complete off right away it'll fade down the uh, um, volumes all the way to zero over a short period of time and then uh, routing and looping so each preset can allow you to define how the unbuffered wiring goes within the liquid router you can connect the front input to the rear input directly just by selecting force on otherwise it'll follow what you've selected in the global settings uh, a preset can override the global settings for return one to send two so you can allow the input of a guitar let's say to go unbuffered directly to the output on channel two uh, the same for the input on channel two can go unbuffered to the output of channel three at a preset level and then return one can go to return so the input of one can go to the input of two and again these are overrides uh, you can allow all your presets to just follow your global settings or you can do a hard um, on or a hard off to override the defaults the amp switches um, allow you to force them on or off or do nothing and there are four amp switches on the back of the liquid router and then if you're in loop uh, switcher mode, uh, by default, the global settings have a group one and a group two, which I'll explain later. But each preset can override the group order. So a loop in general, uh, let's go to loops real quick. So a loop in general allows you to define an input channel and a send channel. So the input is your return, so let's say guitar in. Here I have a bunch of uh, inputs already defined. And a send channel. 
would be the output of that audio. So we're going to have an input of guitar in and an output of whatever you select for this particular loop, loop one. Now, the way presets work and the way actual global settings work, you would define your loops and by default there's one group in the liquid router set up for you. And uh, I have them basically in loop order from 1 to 16. So basically uh, loops are uh, your first loop, uh, again, could be guitar one, uh, guitar input, going to a delay, going to a pitch shifter, going to an axe effects, going to an eclipse, going to your amp output one, and then going to your amp output two. And while you're using the liquid router in loop mode, you can turn loops on and off, and the system will automatically reroute on the fly. So if you shut a delay off, uh, your input of guitar will jump right to loop number three. And if number three was off, then it'll jump to four, and so on and so on. If you have multiple groups, they basically act like one group, but they're independent. So you can have your own set of grouping here. And then as you're jumping from loop to loop, if, if you go from, uh, in this case, four to three to five as your global setting, then if I shut off three, it'll jump from four to five, and so on. So the liquid router will automatically reprogram on the fly as you're turning things on and off with MIDI commands or using the front panel. So these are your defaults. And then, of course, if you set up a group one or a group two and they're not set as disabled, then they'll override the global settings at this preset level. So that's your settings screen. Each of the channels uh, from three to 16 have trim capability on the input. So we can go ahead and change some of the trims. And for this preset, now they're all set. And this is live, so as you're changing the uh, trims, you can hear what's going on on the liquid router. Now, if you want to control th this particular trim with a CC value, uh, trims are controlled from 30, uh, CC 21 to 36. So let's say we want to override the global settings and set it to 21. And then let's say we wanted to control this trim also with 21, but we wanted it inverted. So now as this one's going up, this one's going down. When this one's going down, this one's going up, uh, both using CC21 as an example. And you can add more channels and so on. So this would uh, go up at the same rate as that put it on inverse and it'll go down when this goes up and it'll go up when that goes down so basically mixing basic mixing capabilities your gain channels we have gain on channel 7 through 14 basically the same concept uh, you can set your mixing start values for the preset if you want to override the global settings you can assign a CC value and you can assign two or more channels uh, and turn an invert on and then these will go backwards as you're pressing your expression pedal using some MIDI device. So that's what gain is for. Routing is a interesting thing. Let me uh, clear out my existing programming here and start from scratch for you. Let's uh, select all this. Shut that off. Okay. So, uh, in this example here, I'm going to, this is what your defaults look like on your presets. And uh, the basic concept is we have returns here, which uh, you can drag and pull around. So these are returns, which basically is input going into the liquid router. And then here we have sends, and sends are um, audio from a return will go to a send. You'll connect those. And now the input of AxeFX output uh, one left is now going to the distortion in pedal. Um, now before we go that far, let's go ahead and delete links, and let's talk about how you set things up. So here I have let's create a device out of my inputs that I've already defined. Uh, so I have an axe effects left and a right and then I have 
and now put left and right for the effects return okay so I'm gonna put this over here temporarily and here I have a group of XFX um, inputs now what I can do is start linking things together with magnets so there's the yellow wire and if I link these now they're connected together so I can build devices by linking ports together right so I'm gonna link this one to this this one to this this one to that so here I have an XFX now let's look at a I have a time factor with uh, two inputs or two audio coming out of the time factor into the liquid router and then I have an input for the time factor which happens to be channel number nine so if I link these together I've now created a hybrid device with one input and two outputs from the physical device itself and so I can take a guitar in and let's say for this preset I'm gonna link my guitar in to the time factor I'm going to take the time factor output left and link that into the axe effects and here I have an amp and uh, a DAW input so I'm going to link those two together let's say and I'm going to send the output of the axe effects into the uh, the amp so very simple silly example but you can see how flexible the routing is and as I switch from preset to preset it kind of leaves off where we were. Uh, as far as getting around the router screen, if you're using it in router mode instead of loop mode, um, I could turn on smart wiring, which means as I start moving around, thing, it just keeps things clean. Uh, if you like to work in that route, I can go back to channel to where the ports are actually wired up. Uh, let's see, I can clean all unused uh, routes uh, to the top of the screen, to the left of the screen, right of the screen, split them from top to bottom. So basically as you're working with your routes uh, you can kind of move things around. I can copy a route, go to a different preset and paste a route and now number two looks just like number one. And the interesting part about this is that your routing capability is quite flexible. So I can take guitar input one and route it to an XFX. I can also route it straight to the amp. Um, I can route it to the input of the time factor and have the time factor then go out to amp two. Um, and then I can have the other output go to my DAW. And I can have the other output go to the DAW um, as well and I can have it go to my Kemper input which would be bizarre but okay and I'm gonna link my Kemper input to my Kemper output okay it's snapped right here and my Kemper outputs then gonna go to my amp2 uh, oops unmagnetize that magnetize that back grab the output of my Kemper and send that to my amp too. You get the idea. If you want to undo magnets, uh, two ways to do it. So here I've magnetized all these ports together. If you grab a magnet and just send it to nowhere, it then pulls the magnet apart. So if I grab the magnet and pull it again. If it's a white dot, it means there's no connection. If it's a red dot, there is a connection. So here, highlight this, disconnect it and move on. I can also just grab all of them and remove all the magnets. If there are ports I'm not using I can go ahead and hot, let's say in this example I'm going to highlight uh, all these ports I can right click and neatly stack them and I'll stick them right in the corner there so in fact I'll grab all of these and neatly stack them and you can tell that they're kinda out of the way and then I can neatly uh, crisscross in a pattern. So that's the basics of routing. So every preset can have a different routing. You flip from preset to preset, it changes the routing on the fly. So if a preset is routed and then you go to another preset that's in loop mode, then it jumps into the programming of a loop and so on. 
Now you can program a router, a routing preset to look and act just like a loop preset. Uh, there's nothing that says you can't do that um, and have more flexibility. So, for instance, um, you can think of, uh, let's say, I have a delay. Let's uh, grab our um, time factor for this example. Okay, so I have the uh, input and output in a time factor set up. And so my chain is guitar. Uh, whoops. Let's try that one more time. All right, let's connect our liquid router. I'm going to connect the input of the guitar into the time factor input. And I'm going to connect the um, output to. Uh, whoop, why do I keep doing that? Uh, take the output of the time factor and connect it to my amp. So let's say that's preset number three. I'm going to copy that, go to preset four and paste it. Now I'm going to disconnect the guitar from the time factor and I'm going to go ahead and connect it directly to the amp. Notice that the output of the time factor is also still connected to the amp. So what this is going to do is act like a, dis a delay spillover. So I'm going to get the guitar going straight to the amp, but the output of the time factor, which is still the, the uh, tails of the delay with an unconnected input, it's now going to uh, still carry over to the amp, so you'll still hear the output of the uh, delay. Now that uses two uh, presets in routing mode. However, as you can see with loops, there's an allow spill option so if I turn this on, and let's call this delay 1. So now if I go to my settings here, so I have uh, delay 1 down here. And let's say loop 2 was your guitar input. So now if I shut off through MIDI while I'm in loop mode, the delay, then because I had spill turned on, uh, what's going to happen is the input of the guitar is going to jump to loop 3 directly, but the output of delay, because there's spill, um, and we would turn it on right here as well, uh, then the spill would still go to loop 3. So you'd get the tails of the delay plus the guitar jumping right to loop 3. So it's an intelligent audio switcher looper when you're using groups. So it gives you a lot of power when you start mixing and matching. Anyway, that's the basics. I'll go into more detail at a later time.